In this quick tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how you can use WP Grid Builder facets to filter your generate blocks query loop. Now that's a ton of words, so what I wanna do is just quickly show you. What you're looking at here is a facet that's filtering the categories on my posts on this site, and this filter is coming from WP Grid Builder. And this list of posts that you see down here is my generate blocks query loop element. So what I can do is if I change one of these to let's say food, then you can see it's only going to show me posts that have the category of food. And of course I can switch through these. And the beautiful thing about WP Grid Builder is I can create as many different facets for any kind of combination that I need. It could be a simple search facet for the title. I could create something that filters it by individual taxonomies, such as custom taxonomies, tags, anything you want. So if you're not familiar with WP Grid Builder, I'm gonna quickly walk you through some of the things that you can do. Hey, so I wanted to quickly interrupt this video for two reasons. I know I'm not going super in depth on this, so if you'd like to see more on how you build these query loops and those sorts of things, drop that in the comments. The other thing is I also wanted to mention that subscribing to the channel really does help. So if you can take a moment to do that, it would mean a lot to me. And we're gonna jump right back into the content now. Now what I've done is created a facet here called category filters. And inside of that, I have a ton of different options. So in our case, we are of course going to be filtering our results, but you can see there's a ton of different things that you can do in terms of how that filter behaves. So you can do checkboxes to do multiple categories, radio options, buttons, all these things are relatively self-explanatory. And then I can tell the data source to WP Grid Builder that it should look for on that post. So in my case, I'm just using the default categories, but if you have custom taxonomies, you can filter those here. You can include and exclude terms, change your logic combinations, all the different options here. These things are really, really powerful. And I've covered a lot of this in previous live streams for Oxygen Builder. Now the same approach exists here where we're gonna be filtering custom content. So what you need to do is actually go into WP Grid Builder in the general tab for the settings, you're going to scroll down just a little bit and you're gonna make sure that you have filter custom content turned on. So this is really important because we need to modify our query slightly for it to be able to pick up those facets. And if I quickly jump back to my facets here, what I'm going to do is in this naming tab, I need to keep in mind that I'm gonna use the short code for this facet as opposed to the actual facet element that pops up in Gutenberg. So here in the back end of my page, I have a simple short code element. And what I've done is essentially just copied in that short code that I just showed you. But what I've done is changed the grid that it's looking for to this right here. Now this is totally flexible, but you're gonna use this in a few different places. So you need to make sure that you keep track of what your grid is actually going to be called. So if you only have one on the page, I would recommend you just go ahead and name it WPGB-Content-One. So the code that I'm gonna give you in just a little bit will work totally fine. Now, the other thing that we need to do is in our query loop, we're going to expand this grid. And down here in the advanced tab, if you look at these additional CSS classes, there's two different things that we need. So the code that I'll show you here in just a second is going to look for this custom class. And if that custom class exists, then it's going to append a WP query argument. And then in addition to that, we also need this class here. This is a requirement for WP Grid Builder, which is exactly the same name as our shortcode grid. So that's why I said they need to match. So again, just to recap on the grid element inside your query loop, make sure you have WPGB hyphen query, and then another class that's WPGB hyphen content hyphen one. Then what we need to do is add a little bit of a code snippet. So this was pulled straight from the generate blocks forums and adapted just a little bit to suit our use case. So essentially what we're gonna do is modify the query loops arguments filter. And what it's going to do if I scroll over here just a little bit is it's going to look for our first class that we added to that grid component. So this you could rename whatever you want if this doesn't work for you. But in my case, I'm just going to add WP GB query to this and that will work perfectly fine. If that class exists, then what it's going to do is add this query argument. So WP grid builder is equal to WP GB hyphen content hyphen one. So again, this is the other place that you need to make sure that matches. So what I've done is go ahead and save this code snippet and enabled it here in WP code box. And now that I have all those pieces together, then the front end view is going to work. So now this is going to work seamlessly. There is a short code on the WP Grid Builder docs page that says you can use this to modify custom queries. But if you don't do the steps that I've just showed you with the custom code and the additional classes, the filters will load, but when you click one, it doesn't actually filter the content. 
So make sure that you go ahead and follow these steps and you'll get working filters on any page or any archive across your site. Now, just to recap, make sure in your grid builder settings, you have filter custom content turned on. Then you have this code snippet added and enabled. Then on your grid element, you have these couple of classes. And lastly, in your short code, you're gonna use the short code and not the WP Grid Builder facet element. Again, you're gonna go with WPGB facet ID equals one. And that facet ID, I should just clarify, this facet ID of one is this facet here. So this is the category one. You can see it's actually right there. So you need facet ID to match whatever facet you're trying to show. And then your grid is equal to WPGB hyphen content hyphen one. So this is a really quick demonstration of how you can get these working. It's something that I use very often across my old Oxygen sites, and I'll now be moving forward with some of these on sites for larger blogs or FAQ sections or things like that that need easy to use filters. My go-to basically always is WP Grid Builder. If you don't already have WP Grid Builder, click the links in the description below, and you can also watch some of my older content that I'll put up on the screen, and that way you can have a look at some of the older content, which again is still very much relevant. My name is Jonathan, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.